Theater, uh, and uh, my uh, tema is Scotia Theotium Sinister. Uh, his, this diagnosis is uh, very rare. Prevalence in population is 1.1 or, or 0.4%. Uh, morphology consists of uh, obstructing membrane between the pulmonary veins and the mitral valve in varying patterns. It can mimic the pathophysiology of mitral stenosis. Therapy with surgical resection of membrane or in last time also the balloon dilatation is good option. Uh, classification of this entity uh, was uh, five types. Uh, we have, uh, in our case, type A without other anomalies, uh, but uh, um, there are also uh, in 50% type A1 atri with atrial septal defect uh, and proximal part of left atrium, uh, A2 atrial septal defect in distal part of atrium, 10%. Uh, type B, anomalous pulmonary vein connection to coronary sinus, 1%. At type C, total anomalous pulmonary vein connection, five, about 5%. Uh, here is uh, the picture uh, illustrating uh, our case. Uh, type A, uh, is, here is membrane uh, uh, between uh, the upper and uh, lower left atrium. Uh, with uh, uh, a hole in uh, the septum. A case uh, report uh, uh, in our uh, circumstances was male, 69 years old. First echocardiographic diagnosis uh, was done in his age 35. Uh, we, when he was fully asymptomatic and uh, but uh, didn't agree with surgery. The first acute cardiac decompensation was manifested in the age of 38 years after the tourist camping in High Tatras in our country. Uh, it's uh, mountains about 250, uh, five, uh, 2,500 height above main sea level. Uh, there are uh, the compensation with bilateral pleural effusions and atrial fibrillation. Uh, therapy, yes, doctor. Bed, bed. Dr. Stanislav, no. the slides yes. are not moving, doctor. Can you please check the slides? Uh, uh, slides not, not moving? Yes, doctor. Yes. Mm -hmm. And have you yes. seen any slides? Doctor, you can you can go to slideshow. There is a particular column there, on just at the right top of the screen. Or possibly, doctor, just place a cursor. Place the cursor of your of your uh, PC on. Yes, okay, it's moving now. Yes. yes. Moving now. Oh, yes. thank you. Uh, okay, <clears throat> I uh, talked about uh, classification. Here are uh, uh, five types, uh, as I uh, talked uh, before, and we uh, our case uh, have tape. Uh, type IA uh, without other anomalies. Uh, also, it can be uh, septal defect and uh, anomalous pulmonary vein connection, but it's not our case. Uh, here is uh, type A uh, on the left uh, picture. Uh, it's our uh, case uh, with uh, whole, uh, two holes on the membrane, as you uh, will hear uh, next. Uh, uh, patient was 69 years old, male. The first echocardiographic diagnosis uh, was done in uh, his age 35. He denied surgery, and uh, the first acute decompensation was manifesting in the age 38. 
uh, after the tourist climbing in high Tatras in our country, it's uh, mountains high, uh, 2,500 meters above sea level. Uh, in this time, patient had bilateral pleural effusions and atrial fibrillation. Uh, therapy with bed rest and uh, diuretics restored the sinus rhythm and withdrawal symptoms of recompensation. Patient uh, already uh, again denied cardiosurgery. Afterward, there was uh, appeared uh, in patient uh, bacterial disease with positive HLA, HLA B27 uh, and urologic and vertebral symptoms. 10 years after the estimation of diagnosis, uh, CTS, British patient has dyspnea on exertion and atrial fibrillation. Therapy consists from diuretics and anticoagulation. Nevertheless, repeatedly recommendations of cardiologists that he need cardiosurgery, he denied it due to being afraid of the operation. Patient was hospitalized in the year uh, 2020 because of bilateral cardiac decompensation. Transtoral echo revealed membrane in left atrium, divided it into two departments with two holes about one centimeter in diameter. Transesophageal echo and uh, CT confirmed this membrane with two fenestrations. Pressure gradient was seven millimeter mercury between uh, two departments of, uh, uh, of membrane in left atrium. Pulmonary veins entries were in the upper department of left atrium and uh, uh, was present mitral regurgitation and tricuspidal regurgitation, second degree. Uh, there uh, uh, is uh, also uh, pulmonary hypertension, 103 millimeter of mercury and little pericardial effusion. Here is an echo uh, demonstrated uh, uh, the single uh, uh, departments of the heart, right ventricle, left ventricle, left atrium, uh, uh, upper the mitral valve, and left atrium, uh, upper, uh, upper the membrane. Here is membrane uh, uh, splitting the left atrium uh, to two departments. And here is Aota. Uh, CT scan, uh, you can see here, right atrium, uh, right ventricle, Aota, left atrium, uh, one department, and uh, second department, as you uh, uh, could see on the, also on the echo. Uh, the uh, arrow uh, show you the whole or one of the whole of, of between the two departments of left atrium. Uh, coronary angiography uh, showed normal coronary arteries. Invasive pressure in pulmonary artery was uh, here, 93 uh, and uh, medium 54, uh, five, 54 millimeter mercury. Uh, our patient was introduced to cardiosurgery, but hadn't accept due to very high risk to surgical procedure in these circumstances. We suggested to patient invasive balloon dilatation of some of two membranes window. Here is coronary angiography. Left coronary is negative and right coronary also negative. Uh, but uh, pandemic of uh, coronary virus uh, caused six, seven months delay of in some, uh, preparing of invasive procedure. Patient was admitted to hospital after this period. Uh, we prepared him for catheterization in general anesthesia with uh, transesophageal uh, guided uh, function 
of uh, uh, septum between right and left atrium and uh, uh, preparing from balloon dilatation of some of membranes whole. General anesthesia in this case brings out a new problem because of common stiffness in uh, a morbus brechtiaraf. Patient couldn't bend his head back for introducing the tracheal cannula. Intubation, intubation was possible only with help of bronchoscopy the day after. Then we could realize our operation. Here is Angio. Uh, uh, you can see on the left side uh, the one wire uh, after the puncture of septum between the atria. Uh, stiff wire was uh, introduced to veins uh, in left atrium, uh, fixed the uh, uh, pun puncture uh, place. And uh, another uh, wire in the same catheter uh, go to the uh, uh, left atrium through the uh, membrane in left atrium to and uh, uh, mitral valve to left uh, um, ventricle. Here is the, another uh, NGO. You can see uh, introducing the balloon to the uh, left atrium uh, and through the membrane in the left atrium to the uh, one of the hole uh, in this membrane and dilated uh, this uh, balloon was 2.5 uh, centimeter in diameter and uh, we dilated this hole uh, in, uh, in this membrane uh, in the uh, left atrium. Uh, here is uh, the arrows uh, which um, you show you the impression uh, in a membrane uh, on the balloon because membrane was uh, very stiff and some calcification in it. Here is uh, a transophagal echocardiography uh, picture which you can see uh, right atrium, balloon in the left atrium through the uh, hole mirror the septum of uh, atria and uh, delight it uh, in the uh, hole uh, of the membrane uh, uh, was uh, done uh, also for, by control of the transophagal echo. Result, uh, the hole mirror the uh, interatrial septum was dilated from one to two centimeter in diameter. Pressure gradient between atrial departments sloped down from seven to 3.7 millimeters measured by Doppler echocardiography. Cardiac decompensation was released during one month. Clinical status uh, was uh, both better in patient and uh, uh, got from the N uh, N A N Y H uh, uh, A classification from four uh, to three. Uh, uh, diuretics uh, can be done from two thousand two hundred fifty milligrams per day, reduced to four forty milligrams a day. Uh, now the, the status of patient is very good and uh, uh, only. He is only uh, on uh, 20 milligrams a day. Permanent atrial fibrillation continued, and uh, he is on uh, anti corrugation therapy uh, now. Which is conclusion of this uh, procedure? Catheter based therapy of uh, core triatriatum sinister is acceptable alternative to cardiosurgery. The described case is advanced uh, CTS type A, progressive cardiac decompensation, heavy pulmonary hypertension was treated successfully by balloon dilatation. Clinical status has improved after the procedure substantially. Pressure gradient slowed down to one half of origin value.
uh, we can take home message. Uh, prevalence of CTS is very rare, 1.1 to uh, 0.1 uh, to 0.4 percent. We have found in literature surgical repair of CTS only in 25 cases during 50 years on the Mayo Clinic. Transcatheter dilatation of membrane in left atrium can be done safely as we present it in our patient. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, doctor, for that excellent presentation. We appreciate your coming.